Hey everybody, I'm going to be doing a book review today of this book right here, The Sweet Life in Paris by David Leibovitz. I hope I got that name right. I may not have. I don't know. This was one of the books for February's book club and I thought I would do two separate reviews and I have finished this one. Anybody else that's reading along with me or listening along with me, I'm only about halfway through the other book. So I don't know when I'll end up getting that book review done. Please forgive me. Um, anyway, uh, this book, Sweet Life in Paris. So I picked it up at Books A Million. I was looking in the travel section. I was looking for books that were not travel guides, but actually books uh, that were primarily written by someone from the United States that has moved to another country. I wanted to read something like that, and I felt this book was meeting those parameters of what I was looking for. So I didn't know anything about this book, didn't know anything about the author. I believe this book was copyrighted in 2009, so it was probably written around 2007 or 8, somewhere around in there, I'm guessing. I don't know how long it took him to write it. David Leibovitz, the author of five highly regarded dessert books, writes for a major food magazine and has a popular Paris-based blog. So. There's a little bit of information about him. So this guy, um, or let me put it this way. This book, um, initially when the book is starting, it gives you a little bit of information about the author and it kind of goes in chronological order until he moves to Paris. So he was, a, I think, a, like a, either a college student or a high school student. Well, maybe graduated from high school in the 1980s. And he had taken a... A European trip and then he ended up moving to San Francisco he, this guy was up uh, I think from the East Coast moved to San Francisco spends 20 years in San Francisco uh, working as a pastry chef um, and I'm sure he may have done other things as well but he worked primarily as a pastry chef in San Francisco I think he got a little bit tired of that something happened in his life and he decided that he wanted to move to Paris so all that kind of went uh, quickly but it, I would think in chronological order well then when he gets to Paris it talks a little bit about him getting an apartment how he did it so forth and so on but after that it, it felt to me that some of the chapters were just random stories just thrown out there which is fine and that but I just didn't feel like I'm like well when did this take place in your life? When did this happen? Did you learn from this and then move on? It just felt like he was trying to include some funny stories or um, just stories about things that happened but not in any particular order. They may have been but I didn't get that feel from it. And you can tell that obviously this guy is a, especially from this book, that he's a cookbook author. I would hesitant a pretty good guess I would think and say that this book is probably over 50% recipes and if I had known if I had known that before I probably would not have bought this book let me tell you I love to cook but I do not like reading recipe books uh, I, I may actually end up trying some of these recipes later on I don't know but I will tell you I skipped over the recipes for the most part and the book is full of recipes and then he would he would just write something it seems so random and then that would be in one paragraph and then he would write something else and I'm like I was so confused about how he was tying things in so definitely he's not a novelist okay not at all and the number one thing that this book stood out to me was the fact that it really made me question my my thoughts about traveling to Paris at some point in the future. He painted such an ugly picture of Paris that I was like, do I even really ever want to go there? And not only the, the ugliness about it was about the people, about uh, certain things that happened out on the streets, and I'm like, Surely he loves living there or he wouldn't still live there. He's a United States citizen. I get he keeps he, he talked about stuff about having very little though about how you get the visa process, very little about that. But it really uh, to me it really showed Paris in a negative light. And I was like, "Hmm, 
surely, you know, it was just a lot of negativity. I think he was doing an honest assessment and review of the city, but I don't know. I didn't, I don't want somebody to lie to me and tell me, oh, it's beautiful. Everything is great. The Parisians are so nice. They treat people nice. And then when you get there, it's really not that. I do believe Paris is probably beautiful. From what I've seen in photographs and different travel shows, it looks beautiful. But of course, any city is going to have, regardless of where it is, it's going to have ugly parts and it's going to have pretty parts, <laughs> but uh, or beautiful parts. But he talked about the Parisians themselves are an extremely selfish people. That may or may not be true. I have no idea, but he kept mentioning that if you're walking down the streets or if you're going into a store, these people will try to cut in front of you. They will do everything they can in their power to get ahead of you in line. They will cut lines. They will literally, if you're walking towards you, if they're if you're like walking towards someone, uh, if you don't get out of their way, you will walk into them or they will walk into you. And they just talked about their rude, uh, selfish, um, things like that. And then if you go as a customer into a lot of stores, you have to basically convince them that you are worthy of what they're selling. It's not like they're worried about commission or anything like that. You have to present yourself as worthy to buy an item in their store. And that if you don't go in and say, no, my French is atrocious. I do not speak French. But if you don't say like, bonjour, madam or mademoiselle or monsieur did i even get close um you have disrespected that shop owner or that employee that's working in that store so as as a person who has traveled a little bit i do feel that it is necessary to learn a very few words at least learn a few words it shows res it does show respect to somebody else in another country and they will more than likely engage you in conversation. And he did say most of the people in Paris do speak English, but if they if they feel that you've disrespected them, they will not speak English to you. And that he also talked about it's extremely hard to get waited on in restaurants. And as you know, Americans, we like to um, constantly change our orders. We're not happy with what's on the menu. We always want to do something different. Yes, that is true about Americans. You don't do that in France. So things about that. Um, but overall, I, I was like, not a big fan of this book at all. And I, I wish, I don't know what else to say about it. I just didn't really enjoy the book. It was a chore for me to read it. It put a negative light on the whole city of Paris for me and made me question my thoughts about even choosing that as a travel place. But I still want to go and experience it for myself. And, um, you know, I, I don't really know what else to say about it other than there's a lot of recipes in here. And he does talk about different stories. Like one of the stories was he was um, going to take out his garbage from his apartment. And he said he knew that he'd become a Parisian at that point when he felt like he had to get up, shower. I think he said he sh showered and then actually got dressed up to take his garbage out. Just basically, he had to walk a couple steps out of his apartment into the elevator, go down the elevator, take a couple steps out of the elevator, dump the garbage, and then go back up. He said when he felt like that, he knew he'd become a Parisian because you do not go out in basically your pajamas or if you're lounging around in sweats. You're, you're just a couch of clothes that you're sitting in your house. You do not go out like that to take your garbage out. And then he talked about different men's fashions that you're expected to wear. Different things like that. I'm going to put the book down for now. But um, overall, I really didn't enjoy the book. If anybody else read along with me, let me know what your thoughts are on it. I don't know what else to say about the book. Um, he just had different stories of things that happened to me. Happened to me. Happened to him. Language barrier things where he would be telling a story about something and he would use the wrong word. So that was kind of funny. Um, talked about volunteering at a fish market. Uh, volunteering at a chocolate shop and having a lot of trouble um, getting the chocolates to the customers. He talked about how some uh, people, the Americans specifically, were rude um, to the shop owners. 
It was just kind of stories like that. I would have appreciated more stories like that and less recipes, but I realize he is a pastry chef. That's what he does. Um, so this was more of a recipe book, in my opinion, with a few stories mixed in for good measure. He did t say one thing that was very positive about France in general is that the French healthcare system is very good. I do believe it is a socialist healthcare system where it is all free. But on that note, he talked about going in for surgery and he was given a list of things that he needed to bring himself prior to the surgery. And I was like, he literally had to bring his own medical supplies. That is so foreign to someone from the U.S. I just can't wrap my brain around it. And then he talked about one time he ended up thinking he was having a heart attack. It turned out it was more of a panic attack. Um, but he went to the American hospital and they told him right up front, make sure you bring your checkbook because it ain't free here. So stories like that... Um, dinner parties, proper etiquette of how you should act as a guest or a host, how you should act as a guest in someone's um, going into a shop, things like that. That's what was going on in the book. So um, overall, didn't really care for the book. It was hard for me to get through. Um, the writing was not that great. He's not a novelist whatsoever. It was a bit, some of the stories were a bit hard to follow and I had to go back and reread them. And there was a lot of um, jumpiness around and I didn't feel like anything was in chronological order, which is fine. It's his book. But overall, I wouldn't recommend the book, but read it if you want. And if you read along with me, let me know what you guys think. So I'm going to wrap this up for here. And when I finish the other book, I will do a review of that. That's probably going to be even more rambly, but um, thank you guys for watching. I will talk to you later. Bye, everybody.